What's up, fellas? And welcome to another episode of Running Confessions. I didn't realize how much you guys would like these kind of videos. Um, it was just kind of a random idea I had from some other YouTubers I've seen that just do like general confessions. I mean, I love reading yours as running confessions. <laughs> And apparently you guys like hearing them and hearing all the weird things that people do in the world of running To start off this one So I asked you guys on my Instagram to send me your running confessions and this time I did in parentheses Please limit the poop stories Unless it's really good And guys, I think I got more poop stories than I did last time. I don't know if I I don't there's like I don't know, I think that's just a, a really big issue in our, in our sport as people um, having an accident in their pants when they're running. <laughs> or shortly after. I limited the poop storage for this one. I don't know how many I really did, but I really only chose the best ones that I got. Okay, let's just get s straight into this. Was doing repeats on the track. Dipped at the line to lean right. Went shoulder first into the track and shattered my collarbone. I couldn't run for two months. Oh my gosh, imagine doing like 1K repeats and leaning and then shattering your collarbone. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so sad, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing, but that's, I feel like that would be something that would happen to me. I would be way too optimistic about my lean and then I would end up with a broken collarbone. So I hope you're doing okay now. I hope it's healed. Maybe you don't lean at the line during track repeats <laughs> or at least practice your lean. I don't know. Okay, this is a girl. She wants us to know that it's a girl. I have mastered the art of peeing on summer runs, even if it was in front of people. I just went on the side of the sidewalk and moved my spandex over, simultaneously tying my shoe. I made eye contact several times with strangers while peeing this summer. Or should I say, while tying my shoe. Hashtag, <laughs> my teammates were impressed. Kate, can you teach me your ways? That is really impressive. Um, I don't think I've ever really I don't know how that's done. I can't even picture it in my head. Not that I really want to picture someone peeing on the sidewalk or on the side of the sidewalk, off to the side of the sidewalk, really in my head, but it makes me think like, what does that look like? And how is it done? So props to you. Okay, so my freshman year of XC, every single race, for some reason I peed at the last 100 meters and my coaches and teammates called me PB for peeing Bailey. The legend never died, LOL. Okay, this is very common though. If you pee your pants the last 100 meters of a race, it's actually very common. I would say 50% of my college teammates did it. It's very common, I don't know why, especially for girls, I think you just have less control of like your bladder. It's really weird, I don't get it either, but I have never peed the last 100 meters, but I have peed my pants after. <laughs> I love running. Running confession. One time I did the entire workout because I wanted to actually get better at running. <laughs> this one got me because in the last episode, if you haven't seen it, a lot of the, the running confessions were people that like got away with not running or like got away with their coaches, like, I don't know, not seeing them hiding in the bushes. I tried to limit those ones this time just cause you know, it seems like everyone does it. But this person, they want you to know that they did the entire workout because they wanted to actually get better at running. So I definitely recommend you guys do that. Actually do the workout cause it does help. My husband who doesn't run went for a four mile run with me in November. We were on a path going through the woods and about a mile, one and a half, he told me he had to turn around. I told him I'd meet him at the car. I turned around once I was two miles out and about three quarters miles from the parking lot, I see someone running without a shirt in November. I get closer and realize it's him. I catch up to him and he turns to look at me with a look of misery and just straight up ask him if he bleeped his pants. He essentially couldn't get back to the port potty and had to go in the woods. But because people were walking by, there wasn't really any cover because it's November and there's no leaves. And he had to lean against a tree, pull his pants down slightly, and poop standing up while waving at a passerby, pretending he was relaxing against a tree. I've never laughed harder. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> what a rude awakening to someone that doesn't run. <laughs> Welcome to the sport. It's really fun. <laughs> the bowels love it. This is just, there's a poop story, but that was a good one, I feel like. Okay, so this story isn't from running, but it is from Nordic skiing, which is similar. Anyways, me and a few of my teammates decided to form an ice cream gang. 
So we get a tub of ice cream in the woods by the school where we train, and every time we go out and ski, we stop by and get a bite of ice cream. That is a genius idea. I mean, you must live somewhere cold. I can't even fathom doing that because anywhere I've ever lived has not snowed that much and been that cold. But then I was thinking, like, if you live somewhere where it's cold all winter long, you could keep ice cream outside 24 seven and it would be frozen. That just blows my mind. But that's, that's a great idea, I mean, <laughs> whatever helps keep the morale high when you're training. I had watched Emma Coburn's steeplechase before I went on a run and I had to hop over a guardrail and I tried to go over it steeple style and caught my toe and fell directly on my face in front of a ton of cars. Ooh. See, Emma Coburn makes the steeplechase look so easy and so smooth. She just goes over the hurdles like, like they're not even there. So I can see how you would be, you know, you see her going over the hurdles, you're like, that's not that hard. And then you try for yourself and then something like this happens. It's a sad day. Okay, this person has a poop story, but it's not the normal one. It's the story of the perfect poop. I was training for my first marathon a few years ago, and on my longest run, 36 kilometers, I don't know what that is in miles. I have a feeling that I need to go for a while, but I keep telling myself I can hold it. Eventually, I told my running partner that I needed to go to the bathroom. Obviously, there was no place to go, not even a house. However, we were close to a trail. Because it was late September, all the leaves and foliage were gone, and that left all the bare branches, which were <laughs> close together, to be able to find a private place. Soon I just squatted down on the trail and pooped. However, it was the most majestic poop I've ever had. I'm talking, this is so gross, I can't <laughs> read this on my YouTube channel. I'm talking smooth, long, and streak-free. It is, to this day, the best poop I've ever had, and I still think about it sometimes. <laughs> you know, you can only ask for that when you're on the when you're on a run. And I feel like things like that don't happen that often. So I'm glad that you had that experience. Very, very positive experience. One time I drank an entire bottle of yellow Gatorade before a workout and halfway through a 200, I started spewing vomit onto my white shirt. No one saw, I guess, and then I proceeded to turn my shirt inside out and finish the workout. Hashtag trust the process. <laughs> um, the reason I find this funny is, is that this came from one of my um, former teammates, the University of Oregon. That's why hashtag trust the process makes me LOL because that was one of our team quotes. So, you know, sometimes when you're spewing yellow gear, right? you just gotta trust the process, keep going. Okay, we've got a few more here. I'm on the varsity girls team for a tiny private school and the guys on our varsity team sometimes take their shirts off, which we're not supposed to do, and go join a shirtless boy squad from a public school team when we run by them. They tell the other team they're from other public schools from around the area. <laughs> How would they not find out? Like, don't you go to meets? I mean, I guess that's a way to blend in. It's a way to do it. If it works, it works. I think this is a confession, but it is an embarrassing moment. I was doing lunges with a dumbbell, and I thought that if I held the dumbbell over my head, it would also work my core. So I did. I guess my hands were still sweaty from my run because <laughs> as I was lunging, one of my hands slipped off the dumbbell and it fell onto my head. Haha, -ha, I didn't get a concussion, and there was no blood, so it's a funny moment now. That sounds traumatizing. But that's something I could really relate to because my hands are always sweaty. And I find whether I'm like doing core on the mat and my hands are on it and they're just slipping, or if I'm using a dumbbell and my hands just get really sweaty and uncomfortable, so I feel like this is something that would indeed happen to me as well. And I guess going off of that, one, it kind of reminded me of one of my running confessions is, so senior year of college, we had to take this like balance test before cross country season started where we had like a bunch of things being analyzed, I don't know. And we had to take this balance test and you had to balance on one foot with your knee up and close your eyes. And then you stood on like this square and the square took like, I don't know, measurements of your movement of like your foot when you're balancing. And guys, I couldn't stand with my eyes closed and my one leg lifted for more than one second. I was falling, I, it was so embarrassing. So the results were like on the screen and everyone else has had like one dot and then there's like a little bit of movement because the, fo the foot moved a little bit when they was balancing. But my chart started here and then it was like this. It was like pathetic. I've never felt so pathetic in my life. It's like, it's things like that where it really showed me how bad my balance really is. And then when my trainer was like, Emma, he did like this hip assessment on me. He's like, Emma, your hips are both weak and tight. And I was like, you know, it seems accurate. So my hips are weak and tight and I have bad balance, swag. <laughs> but yeah, everyone was laughing at me and it was really embarrassing, so. 
One of my coaches has been around for decades and you really gotta love the man. We were here at Team State's Mitka, I don't know who that is, and he was keeping track of the score in his journal but no one really took it into consideration because we didn't think it was accurate. The whole meet was really close and my school was either gonna be second or third but no one could tell. We ended up placing third and my coach who had been keeping score was frazzled. He immediately grabbed his journal and went to the officials and showed them the points he had calculated. The officials actually messed up the scoring, so we ended up trading trophies with the other team for a second. Ooh, that's savage. Not very juicy, but kind of an iconic moment for good old Coach Myth. That's like very wholesome. That makes my heart happy. You know, sometimes the old ways, they work better than, I don't know, com computer systems. Things can get messed up easily, so you, you always gotta have someone double check in the scores. So shout out to your coach, he's doing something right. Running confession. Once my friends and I went to XC practice after school, went home in our practice clothes and slept in them. And then <laughs> got back up Saturday morning, went to practice in the same clothes. Never showered or changed. Ooh. Okay, I have stayed in my dirty clothes for a long time. But I don't think I ever went to practice, laid in them all day, slept in them, woke up, and went back to practice in the same clothes. Like that is pretty bad if you're doing that, guys. Like, come on, shower, okay? Maybe it happens once, but if you're doing this routinely, you need to check yourself. All right, the last one to end on. I got this, I, they sent a picture along with it, which made me a little skeptical. I was like, what's this picture going to be? My XC team was supposed to be on a run at our park, and instead we went into the middle and built a teepee. And then she sent me a picture of the teepee. That is iconic. That's way better than any of my stories. Like, oh, I ran to Coffee Bean and got water. <laughs> Making a teepee, that's epic. Well, guys, that's another episode of Running Confessions. I hope you guys enjoyed learning from your fellow fellas <laughs> on what they get up to in their time running. I mean, I limited the poop stories. There were still some in there, I'm sorry. If you guys like this series, make sure to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at Emma Abrahamson so you don't miss your chance to be featured in the next Running Confessions video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, fellas.